will be setting the legal budget. I believe to do otherwise would actually be to disadvantage our most vulnerable residents. The budget proposals in this resolution, resolution I'm moving tonight, um, which you, you got um, to, to go through, achieve our target savings of 27.5 million for 2014-15, and do so in a way which will enable us to make progress in achieving our key corporate priorities around jobs, uh, protecting vulnerable and marrying the gap in inequalities, and as far as possible protecting our valuable frontline services. Just want to say a little bit about the consultation uh, that we've just been talking about. Um, we have uh, put a lot of work, uh, I believe, uh, to make sure that the results of the consultation uh, have been a key piece of evidence in putting our budget proposals together. And as I said earlier, I do want to thank everyone who took part in the consultation. Um, over 6,500 questionnaires was an excellent return. We also held discussions with numerous groups we mentioned. However, I want to emphasise that this was not merely an academic exercise. I, mean, I, I really do um, dispute the idea that the, the conclusions were all agreed before the consultation started. The budget consultation indicated, as Graham said, that residents do not believe it is acceptable to reduce winter maintenance on the highway network or to charge for parking at a number of green parking areas and parks, coast and countryside sites around the borough. We agree, and neither of these options will fall part of our recommendations tonight. Secondly, in line with the views of the public, we also believe that the proposed savings option, which would have stopped maintenance across 16 beaches, most rolling greens, and many of our smaller parks and green spaces, goes too far. We therefore propose that a much smaller savings made and maintenance of all of these sites is continued going forward. So I believe we have listened to what the public has said to us. Let me just say a few words uh, about the proposals. Um, uh, other proposals in our resolution. First of all, in terms of one of our key priorities, protecting vulnerable people and reducing inequality, we will continue to protect our frontline services as far as we can. We will make up for the government's failure to award us funding to deal with demographic growth, as we all know we have an aging population, and we will invest 7.6 million over the next three years in measures to support our older people young people with learning disabilities and adopters and special guardians. I'm also proud, and the cabinet is proud, that we're all, is also one of the few councils to adopt the ethical care chart, whereby people working in the care sector are paid a living wage and no one is employed on zero-hour contracts. We aim to extend this to other providers and we will also uh, save money in the long term by investing one million in early intervention and prevention services for vulnerable adults, particularly older people, and a range of other services commissioned through voluntary community and faith organisations. We intend to respond to the cost of living crisis by retaining a discount on the council tax for older residents aged 70 and over, but we will restrict this to properties in council tax plans A, B, C, and D. I am proud that we will remain as one of only three councils in the country to offer an old person discount, an older person's discount on the council tax. We will mitigate the effects of this government's appalling bedroom tax by investing an additional one hundred thousand pounds in providing enhanced information and advice services. We will invest eight hundred pounds, eight hundred thousand pounds in maintaining the council tax support scheme so that vulnerable people do not have to pay an increased proportion of their council tax. We will put additional funding into attracting jobs and regeneration by investing $700,000 of our public health funding to safeguard the excellent Reach Act program, which helps unemployed people get back into work. And we will invest £200,000 in creating an economic development unit in order to help attract additional jobs and investment to rural. We will invest 356000 on the introduction of a selective licensing scheme for private rental properties in three targeted areas in the borough. 
This will ensure that every landlord in these areas is required to bring their properties to a high standard before they reach the market. We will also further invest in our leisure services, including £200,000 in two three key football pitches in Seacombe, which comes on the back of an additional capital investment of £2 million in upgrading Europa Pools, Guinea Gang, and West Kirby leisure centres. A significant proportion of the, of the savings that we're moving tonight, some £5 million, will come from transforming rural councils to make it a leaner and more fit for purpose organisation. We also intend to deliver substantial savings from the shared services uh, programme that we've agreed with Cheshire West and Chester Council around functions such as IT and procurement. And I believe that by focusing our savings on back office services, we have sought to minimise the impact on the front line. We believe that our new model of neighbourhood working has the potential to deliver real innovations. Following the review of the operation of the constituency committees in the spring of next year, we will announce the funding to be devolved in 2014-15 and consider how mainstream budgets the council and other public agencies can best serve each geographic area. Let me now just say a few words about our workforce. Um, this administration believes that good industrial relations, particularly in the midst of unprecedented cuts, are vital for the future of this council. Indeed, I believe that good industrial relations should be the hallmark of any progressive organisation. Fully all the We reject totally the consistent attempts by the main opposition party to remove funding for trade union representatives. We do not believe that is a sign of a progressive organisation. We've worked hard with our trade union colleagues to achieve the best value for money for both staff and our residents. So following detailed discussions with the trade unions, we are proposing that the number of full-time trade unions and convict posts for use and to be funded by the council will be three, with one additional full-time trade union to convict post for use and to be funded by our schools. We are also proposing that the council funds one full-time post for Unite. This administration also believes that it is absolutely right to do everything possible to maintain and enhance the voluntary settlement scheme. We do not support the budget option that says we should merely restrict the statutory minimum. I'll make that very clear. Again, following detailed discussions with our trade union colleagues, we are proposing that the current uncapped scheme, using a multiplier of 1.8, continues until the 31st of March. 2014. With effect from the 1st of April 2014 to the 31st of March 2016, the enhanced voluntary settlement scheme will be uncapped using a multiplier of 1.4. The revised scheme, I believe, would still be significantly above the basic statutory entitlements and we believe will still be able to amongst the highest in the North West. I would like to just conclude my statement by saying a few words about the cancer tax. The 2014-15 cancer tax level will, will be set at our budget council on the 25th of February next year. Last year, in line with many of the authorities of all political parties, we decided not to accept the government's cancer tax freeze grant as the funding was not built into our base budget and was therefore, I believe, not a sustainable way of managing the budget. And I understand that the government is due to publish the local government second month, 2014-15, uh, at the end of December. The assumption in the savings we are moving tonight is a 2% increase in the council tax, which is significantly below inflation. However, given the pressures on the council's budget, Cabinet feels that increasing the council tax by this level is the responsible thing to do as it would enable us to avoid even more damaging cuts which would impact on our staff and residents. However, I believe it's sensible to await the outcome of this local government settlement before a definitive decision is taken. So, in conclusion, the budget proposals that I'm setting out tonight in this resolution, I, I believe, does deliver our target saving of 27.5 million and will do so in a way which minimises the impact on our frontline services. The budget proposals we are moving 
builders economies through the greater targeting of services and placing more emphasis on early intervention and prevention. They, they protect our workforce by, by maintaining an enhanced voluntary settlement scheme and continuing to fund full-time trade union reps. They also include, as I set out, significant growth aimed at addressing our key corporate priorities. So I'm proud of the fact in, in finishing that we have, I think, progressed from a situation where we inherited an overspend of 17 million to a position now where we have a stable, achievable in-year budget. This has been a key part of our improvement plan. And in spite of the draconian government cuts, which I mentioned, I believe we have put our finances in order. We now have a great opportunity to build on these improvements and we make Wirral a high-performing council. So that's my uh, comments uh, on the resolution. You've obviously got the detail um, uh, in front of you. Um, so I, I just like to leave it at that and ask um, if I could uh, accept the rules.
basically that's the only one we've dealt with. I'm going to suggest, uh, if anybody's on to the 